God is moving through so many people. Today, I'm going to kind of get into something slightly different. I'm going to talk about my own experience. And the title of my message is Spirit Bears Witness. It's about the internal work that the Holy Spirit does inside of us. Spirit bears witness. It's taken from Romans 8, where it says the Holy Spirit comes and bears witness with our own spirit that we are sons and daughters of God. The Holy Spirit comes and ministers to us. He communicates with our own spirit. You know, we all have a spirit, right? Spirit, soul, and body. We have a spirit. The Holy Spirit comes and ministers with our own spirit that we are sons and daughters of the Most High God. And I pray that today, even as I share um, a few scriptures and share my own story, I pray that God, the Holy Spirit, will come and speak to your own spirit, speak to your own hearts, that you are sons and daughters of the Most High God. Amen? Are we good? Let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we just thank you for this morning. Will you just come, Lord? Holy Spirit, will you just come? We open our hearts wide, Lord, to you right now. Come and minister to us. Come and speak to us. Lord, we pray that the word today will captivate hearts. It will challenge minds. But more importantly, Lord, we just pray that it will transform us from you then. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen? Amen. So we've had um, really incredible preaching and, and I've been thinking about it and I came across the scripture in John 16 where it says this. This is the, the context. is Jesus is having this conversation with the, um, with the disciples and he's telling them, hey, listen, uh, my time on earth is coming to an end. I need to go to the Father. But do not be sad. Don't be sorrowful because I'm going to send you a helper. The disciples are probably thinking, oh, what do you mean you're going away? You were just here for three years. You're going away already. Come on. We need you, Jesus. We need you. You speak life to us. He said, yeah, I know. I know. But listen, it is to your advantage. This is what the scripture says. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. He's saying the helper. The original Greek translation uses this word, parakletos. Paracletus. And what, what does paracletus mean? Let's look at the Amplified. Do we have the Amplified up there? This is, this is beautiful. Watch this. But I tell you the truth, it is to your advantage that I go away. Because if I do not go away, the helper, who is the helper? The paracletus. And who is he? He is the comforter. He is the advocate. He is the intercessor. The counselor. The strengthener. The standby. The one who stands by you will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him, the Holy Spirit, to you to be in close fellowship to you. So the, the disciples are listening. He said, hey, listen, it's, but, but it's just not for you. It's also for the believers who are going to be coming after you. The generation of believers who are going to be coming after you. He's going to be their comforter. He's going to be their advocate. He's going to be their strengthener. In fact, he's, he's probably saying, hey, you know what? In, in 2024, May, Mosaic Church is going to be doing this series on the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to come and minister to them. He's going to show himself as a comforter. Are you going through a season of difficulty? He's going to show himself as the advocate. 
Have you been falsely accused? He's going to show himself as a counselor. He's going to come alongside and speak to you. Not only that, he's going to be your standby. He's going to stand alongside you. Are you lonely? Do you go through a season of loneliness, being alone? He is your standby. Jesus is saying, the Holy Spirit is going to be your standby. He's going to come alongside you. He will never leave you, nor forsake you. Amen? That's amazing, right? That's amazing. That's who the Holy Spirit is. You know, you're probably here thinking, oh, you know, this Holy Spirit is like, mm, you know, I'm kind of new to all of this. You know, but that's okay. We're all on a journey here. I was sad one time. I came from a, a traditional church as well. The Holy Spirit was a dove, right? We, we had doves all over the church, and that's how we looked at him. He comes and he rests on us. You know, he kind of flies around in our service. But, but that's okay. If you're still kind of uncomfortable, that's all right, because we are all on a journey together. And you'll start to discover him as a God who's going to come alongside you as a comforter, as the advocate, as the strengthener. Amen? It's exciting. Come on. Is anyone excited about that? Yeah. Come on. Yeah? You know, I'm going to share a bit of my story just because he was all of that to me. About 14 years ago, I was in a church about this size. My wife and I, you know, our kids were kind of young, um, Jaden and Zara. And we were in this church. We were really active and we were really serving. We were there a couple of years. We were serving. We were doing all kinds of things, you know, setting up chairs. We did connect groups. We were leading a connect group. Uh, in fact, Priscilla was even on staff at the church and, and we did all our best. We, we loved the church. We loved the community. And I was working with Malaysia Airlines. Uh, I, was doing, I, was, I was doing relatively well and everything looked okay. If you met me, you'd think, ah, he looks like he's got it all together. He's all right. He's married. He's got kids. But I was not. The thing is, sometimes we can put on this facade, right? We can sort of put on this image of ourselves that we've got it all together. And then when we're alone, and then when we are driving by ourselves in the car, and then when we are going through something difficult and it really hits us. I was in a season where I was really quite depressed. It didn't show. It's not like I was mopping around. But you know, my wife knew. But I was going through a season where I was struggling internally. I was a very determined person. I wanted to make it, make it, make it. And I was pushing myself. But inside, in my core, there was an emptiness. I was struggling because all of these things were going through my mind. You know, I, I grew up in a family where at the age of one, my dad lost his um, faculty. He lost his mind. He, he kind of lost it. And um, from that time onwards, our family went through a very difficult time. I never saw my dad as a father, like probably most of us did. I never had a father. I never had a decent conversation right up to the time that he passed on. I never knew my dad as a father, but he was always a someone who caused me a lot of pain and, and it was difficult at home. I remember as a teenager just standing um, outside my home and thinking, God, what, what's going on? I mean, the God that I kind of knew. And I was thinking, God, what is going on? What's, what's all of this? It's, it's, it's horrible. It's miserable. Why am I here? What am I doing here? Why did you put me in this family? I always grew up thinking, what is going to become of me? I mean, I've got nothing. I feel empty. I'm struggling. And I turned to pornography. That was my coping mechanism. I turned to pornography. You know, dopamine, right? It, it kind of takes away that pain. I was, I was into that and even, in, even into my adult life. So being in that season as an, as an adult in the church and going through all of that, and I'm, I'm praying and say, God, it needs to stop. It needs to stop. We sing about freedom in church, but I don't feel it. 
I don't feel it. What is this freedom? And in that time, I met this man, this man of God, this great pastor. And, and I started talking to him because he had a ministry on freedom, inner healing, stuff like that. He, he taught about marriage and, and, and stuff that's going on. How do you deal with childhood brokenness and so on? So I started to talk to him. I started to meet him. I said, listen, uh, Pastor, I'm struggling. It's embarrassing, but I'm, I'm really going through all of these things. In fact, my marriage is also in a bit of a mess. So he starts to talk to me. He said, uh, he, he finds out how things were with me at home. He said, and he finds out, okay, your dad was... It was like that, okay, your mom had to work and long hours and she couldn't even be that nurturer that every child needs. He said, you grow up in a family where your mom and dad were not able to pour that into your life. He starts to talk to me about this whole childhood development stuff. He's a pastor, but he also knew psychology. He started to talk to me the different stages of a childhood and, and all of those things and all those things that never took place inside of me. He said, there is a, something was amiss inside of you growing up in that and now you're an adult. You still feel it. I'm like, I know. I, I don't think about it. I'm not even thinking or considering. I'm, I'm, I'm going for it. He said, yeah, but it never leaves you. What you've gone through as a child stays with you even when you're an adult. I was like, oh gosh, really? I know. So he starts to talk to me. He opens up the scripture, starts to speak to me about God the Father. He said, your father and mother may leave you or forsake you, but God will never leave you. I said, yeah, but I don't feel it. I said, I come to pray, I worship, I love it, I know of God, but I do not know him. He said, I, I love church, I love doing all of this, and I know of him. I can quote the scriptures. He said, yeah, that's not the point. So we start to talk and then one day he says, you know what? I feel God wants to heal you. Let's, let's get to my office. You know? and then I'm sitting on the couch. He said, let's pray. He's, he's, he, I'm sitting on the couch and he's standing here and he just says, Holy Spirit, come. He just says, Holy Spirit, come. I set your presence around my brother Ralph. And next thing I know, I'm starting to shake. My, my hands are shaking, I'm shaking, and I'm vibrating in that seat. And before I know it, I'm on the floor, I'm wailing, right? I'm just sobbing and wailing. I don't know what came upon me. I'm just going through this, and I'm thinking, what's going on? And, and I see myself just, just sort of barreling right through this dark, tunnel, tight, very tight tunnel, just going on and on. And next thing you know, I came out of it. And it was a bright light and I'm feeling these waves and waves and waves of just love of God just filling me, filling me. I'm sobbing, I'm sobbing, I'm feeling, I'm feeling because I've never felt this before. It's, it's just hitting me inside and inside I'm just going, whoa, what is this, what is this, what is this? I don't know how long I was there, but I was on the floor. Then I came out of it, and he's looking at me. Are you okay? I said, I don't know what happened. He said, that was the Holy Spirit. That was the Holy Spirit. He has healed your heart. I said, I don't know. I, I feel something strange inside. You will see it. He said, go back this week. For the next so many weeks. He said, this is all you do. Don't think about anything else. He said, go to Matthew chapter 3. He said, remember when Jesus came out after being baptized? God the Father speaks these words. This is my son, my beloved, of whom I'm well pleased. You all know that scripture? Really famous, right? So he says, go back home, meditate on the scripture, but now put your name in it. Put your name in it. And imagine as you say that, imagine God the Father is saying this. You say your heart is healed, but your, not, your mind needs to come to that place too. So I get back, no, no, that's all I did. I said, Ralph. I just imagine God is saying, Ralph, you are my son, my beloved. I am well pleased with you. Do you know what that does to someone like me? I've never heard in my entire life. 
Oh, I'm just going through a season when I'm just meditating and thinking how God was just doing stuff inside of me. And I'm just starting to feel, oh my God, I, I know you now. I, I, I can feel you now. I could see God as the Father. It's the first time ever. I've served in church for a number of years, but the first time I experienced it. God became real inside of me. For the first time, I saw him as a father. When the scripture says, your father and mother may forsake you, but I will never leave you. It started to make meaning to me. It started to do something inside of me. So I'm just being in that place. And I meet him again after that. And I'm telling all of this. He said, just stay in that place. Stay in that place. Stay in that place. And I go on and on and on. And then something starts to happen. So the first thing that actually happened to me is this. Identity. Identity restored. I, for the first time, saw myself as a son. Come on. For the first time, I saw myself as a son. Oh, that's so important for us, right? At some point in our lives, we need to know who we are. We can't keep doing this life on the empty, right? So this scripture, Romans 8. This is the beauty of it. Romans 8 says this, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are sons of God. For you did not receive the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you received the spirit of adoption. That's who the Holy Spirit is. The spirit of adoption. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of adoption. He's adopting us into the kingdom. By whom you cry out, Abba, Father. I would stand and worship God without a music. I could sense God and I can sense his pleasure over me. Come on. That's healing. That's amazing. That's a miracle for someone like me. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit, our spirit man, that we are children of God. So that's what I saw. I saw myself as a son. My identity was restored. And that was the beginning of everything for me. I'm telling you. That was the beginning of everything that I ever did right. Something starts to happen. I'm worshiping, I'm worshiping, I'm praying, I'm reading the word. I'm reading the word and the words are just propping up. It just starts to speak to me. I'm like, oh, what's going on? This is amazing. It's amazing. It's new to me. It's amazing. I understand it. I understand it. I read the word and the word starts to read me. The word starts to read me. I read it long enough until I come to that place where I start to see So my heart is healed. My mind is going through this season. And God started to show me this. He said, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So I'm thinking, okay, I, I need to be transformed. And then he says, but your mind needs to be renewed. So you may be healed, but you're thinking. Your ways are still the old ways. You may be healed, but God is saying, you see yourself as a son, but not, now you need to walk as one. You need to live as one. You need to think as one. You need to relate as one. And God starts to show me things. And I start to deal with different areas in my life. I didn't, I didn't see there were so many things going on wrong within me. You know, when you're so caught up with yourself, you become self-absorbent. Everything revolves around you. That's where I was. Everything revolves around you. You're the most important person on the earth. In your misery, in your comfort, in your everything. Right? Everything revolves around. But God is saying, hey, listen, let's come out of that place. Let's come out of that place. He starts to show me things, show me things. I, saw, I started to see even the strain of selfishness within me. I started to see why a lot of things was going on even in my marriage. 
My wife Priscilla had already started this journey before me uh, uh, some time back and she was going through this season where God was healing. She came through from a difficult family as well, but God has been doing that work. So I came on to it much later, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting this and the God has started to show me the way you relate to her has to change. The way you speak to her has to change. He said, Ralph, you got into this marriage thinking what's in it for you. It's like, yes. <laughs> That's why you get married, right? I mean, what can you give me? You complete me. Right? You complete me, so you got to give me something, yeah? And God said, why don't you complete her? Why don't you minister to her? Why don't you bring that healing into your marriage? Start to show me things. He says, unless the wheat falls on the ground and dies... It cannot bear fruit. I'm thinking, oh gosh. I start to see pride in myself. I start to see a certain sense of arrogance. When we go through a season, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I always think I'm right. We never want to give in, right? We always feel that, you know, I got to be right. Then I start to realize it's not about who is right, but it's about doing what is right. If you want your marriage to be healed, you got to do what is right. And God just takes me through the season, starts to show different areas of my life. I was a proud man. I was an angry, angry, but proud man. But I had to lay it down. There was different areas in my life that I had to lay it down. I constantly kept going back. Because I was in that place of being healed, it felt a lot easier to do it. If you had told me to do it previously, I would say, no. I'm in pain. I need them to show me comfort. I need her to show me what I need. I've gone through a difficult life. I'm entitled. And God is showing me all this thing. And at the same time, something else was happening. Something else is happening. This, this, this stirring that's going on inside of me. I'm starting to, to hear. I'm starting to see. I'm, I'm hearing. I'm, I'm listening to this song uh, uh, played, you know, and, and, and I'm hearing the lyrics and God, and I hear this thing, God's plan. God has a master plan for you. God has a master plan for you. God has a master plan for you. I'm hearing this over and over again. And I go to church, the pastor preaches, and he says, wherever God places you, that's your home. Because he moved from Australia to Malaysia to start the church and he said wherever God places you that's your home I bought that CD it used to be a CD at that time I took it back and I was listening to the guy and it just starts to speak to me just ministering to me over there wherever God places you that's your home and then Emirates Airline comes uh, to Malaysia to do a road show and, and, and something is time say apply go for it apply for the job I did I applied I go through the different um, interview process uh, um, and then came to the point where I needed to now fly to Dubai for the final interview. So I'm, I'm thinking and praying, okay, God, I've come this far. I know I feel there's a stirring. There's something happening here. There's a move. Uh, I said, but you've got to show me today. I go to church. I said, Lord, you need to talk to me. I, I need to hear it clearly. So after the service, the pastor is going to pray and I go to the front. He just lays his hand. He just does a simple prayer and I fall. I come slain under the spirit. And what's interesting is I'm there on the ground and I see the screen. I see my logo, right? And Emirates, I'm worshipping God and I see this, this huge aircraft and I'm worshipping. Then I start to hear the voice of God speak to me. He's telling me, Ralph, I'm taking you out of your comfort zone. I'm taking you away from your friends, from your family, from everyone who knows you to a land where no one knows you. He said, you're going to go to this land and you're going to discover me and know me in ways you've never known me before. You and your family will move there. And you will prosper there. Even when you go through a difficult season, Ralph, I'm still going to be there with you. And then we moved to Dubai. So the second thing that's happened was this. And I like what um, uh, Paul writes in Ephesians 1. 
He talks about the eyes of your understanding open the spirit of revelation and he says this I have not stopped giving thanks for you remembering you in my prayers I keep asking that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ the glorious father may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation that you may know him better I pray that the eyes of your heart the eyes of your heart the eyes of your understanding may be enlightened may be open in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you to the riches of his glorious inheritance in his holy people so we moved to dubai um Priscilla and I, with the kids were young, we go to this church, and in this church, we, you know, we start to worship. We start to um, we start to lead a connect group, and eventually, the, the pastors come and speak to us. Say, hey, "Will you guys, will you both please start a marriage program in the church?" And we're like, um, "Sure." So he kind of heard a little bit about our background and the, some of the ministries we were involved in. He said, "Will you please start a marriage program?" So we do. We start this marriage program in this church and we have couples come into our home and next thing you know we start a parenting program in the church and and we have couples coming again we start to teach them we start to teach them how important parenting is we start to teach them how important marriage is and how we bring our brokenness quite often into a marriage and and tell God comes and heals that you will struggle So we used to pray and and have time of ministry that God will come and heal their hearts. So we start to do this program for a number of years and then Priscilla eventually goes out and starts to do the program outside. She starts it in the schools. She starts in schools, then she starts to do it in certain communities who are non-Christians. And that kind of takes off. Then she starts to do other ministries. She goes on to study and so on and so forth. And and she opens up her own. So things are happening like in acceleration we we're not doing anything it's just like people coming and doing stuff and we think oh wow god this is amazing we never thought looking back where we were just not too many years ago we were a mess our marriage was a mess we didn't show it but it was but god turns that mess into a message that's what he wants to do with each and every one of us that's what he wants to do with each and every one of us he wants to heal your identity he wants to take you on a journey then he wants to use you to touch lives we are here in mosaic not just for ourselves there's a city out there there's a people out there that we can reach But let's find our identity in him first. Let's find our place in him first. Let's not just be a people that know of God but know him truly on the inside and you will do wonders. The word of God says those who know they are God. Those who know know they are God. I mean really know they are God shall do great exploits. You heard the stories, right? We had 2 3 weeks of 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 Pastor Alvin and Pastor Lear and Viera even sharing all of this those who know their God will do great exploits that's you and I that's you and I come on church that's you and I anyone excited here hey listen i don't know where you're at but i know where the holy spirit is at he's here He's your comforter. He's your advocate. He stands with you and he fights on your behalf. He's your comforter. He's your healer. He strengthens you. I just want to pray for all of us. Just wherever you're at. Can we all just stand? Just wherever you're at. Let's just stand and let's just do this this short chorus even as the worship team just take it just start to open up your hearts to him you know the holy spirit is here 
he wants to touch us more than anything he wants us whole more than anything he wants us whole more than anything he wants us to know him as a father jesus said you will know the truth and the truth will set you free i don't know who needs to hear this but i i just sense this word of the father saying this i know you god is telling us i know each and every one of you i know who you are i know where you've been i know exactly what you're going through i'm your father your eternal one i was there before you were formed i was there when you were being knit in your mother's womb i know you through and through i have loved you with an everlasting love i have loved you with an everlasting love i have loved you i have loved you i have loved you and i still love you with an everlasting love you are the apple of my eye i've carved you on the palm of my hands i've carved you on the palm of my hands holy spirit just come and touch your people right now we open our hearts wide 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 we open our hearts wide oh lord to you right now holy spirit come and bear witness with our spirit that we are sons come and bear witness with our spirit that we are daughters that we are children of the most high god that lord we will not leave this place the same we are not orphans but we are children come and touch lord come and touch your people come and touch your people right now lord come and touch your people let there be a shift inside of them god let there be a shift inside of them minister lord to them minister to your loved ones minister lord to your loved ones shake it stay in that place just for a moment stay 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 in that place these are your children lord these are your children lord touch them you are my son you are my daughter you are my beloved i'm well pleased I'm well pleased. I'm well pleased with you. I'm well pleased you're precious to me. Thank you God. God, I just thank you for all that you're doing. Thank you Holy Spirit for all that you're doing in this place. Thank you Holy Spirit for moving in our midst and touching hearts. Thank you Holy Spirit that even as every person are standing here they are having an encounter Lord with you. Thank you Lord they're having a personal encounter with you. The God who loves them is touching them. The God who loves them profusely is touching them. Cheke na mokore. Thank you Holy Spirit. We receive 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 thank you jesus thank you jesus we worship you you're a good god we love you we glorify your name come on let's give him a praise We glorify your name Lord. We glorify your name Lord. We worship you Jesus. Thank you God.